Okay, this is a teardown of the Yesu FT3D. Already taken this radio apart a couple times, and I've taken the uh, FT2D apart, and I've posted pictures on the wiki, so you can see those. So I'll run through here real quick and show you how it's done. So there's four screws on the back here. One of these screws is actually threaded inside of this case right here, and it's meant to help you uh, pull this metal part out a little easier, and it's this one right down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that in there because as I've taken this apart on the FT2D, when you take the two screws out on the back of it, this whole chassis just pulls right out and the buttons and everything, you pop the buttons off, but everything's attached to the chassis. On this one, it's a little different. On this one, they actually have a couple screws you have to take off. And on this one, it's not quite as easy to pull these knobs off. So using a spudger, you can go between the first and second uh, knob and get it underneath there like that. And you can press it and, and pop the first one off. It's just a uh, it's just a pressure fit, but on this uh, on this radio it was took a lot of pressure, so I wasn't able to get it off. Um, this bottom one, if you squeeze it just right, you can squeeze and and kind of pull it off. You'll notice uh, the way the plastic's shaped. If you squeeze on one side, it should release it. Um, if not, you can just kind of get the spudger underneath there as well. And then using a little flathead, there's a rubber rubber gasket right here. Just pop it right out. And so in here there's these kind of split flathead looking uh, pieces that you have to take off. Normally you can do this with just a little flathead screwdriver and you can kind of put pressure on one side like this. So you can just kind of hold it here on one side and just cause, uh, cause it to turn. I noticed these were really hard. I wasn't able to do that. I actually scraped my plastic here a tiny bit. You know, it's no, nothing you'll see though when it's back together, but just annoying a little bit. So I went in the garage and I got one of these C-clip uh, tools that I happen to have just to have something that could apply pressure to both sides. It doesn't fit exactly, but if you kind of press and finagle it in there, it will, um, it will cause enough pressure on both sides um, that then the thing turns and it loosens. And so it might be different. Your radio might just be super easy to do it the single, uh, single flathead kind of way. Uh, mine wasn't. So, but then once it's a little loose, you can just use it. You see how I take it and just kind of spin it around there and cause these to come off. And so once these come off, I'll take off that last screw and then, uh, we'll kind of talk about the threads there and and what an easy way is to pop the chassis out. I have this little tray here. You see it in all the videos to um, just keep all the parts uh, separate and keep them in order. So when I go to put it back together, it's easy to remember. Uh, one other word of caution is if you have an SD card in here, <clears throat> at this point I would remove the SD card so it actually will hang over the plastic a little bit and if you try to press this case out I'm sure you'll bust uh, you'll bust this connector so if you're even thinking about doing this uh, and you're watching this video just go take it out of your radio right now so that when you go to do this you don't forget about that step because um, it's easy to apply some pressure and break it so inside of this screw hole it's threaded um, you can put another screw in there that's a little larger than this uh, I, I don't have a screw that small. Maybe I do somewhere, but nothing that I could find easily. So what I do is just press on the buttons themselves and pressing on the buttons pushes out this back case. You could do press on the screen, but I didn't want to do that. And so once you do that, this case starts to be out a little bit and through these little vent holes here in the bottom, you can just put a flathead and you can start to lift this case to the point where you can get it up and then once you get it up like that it just pulls straight out of the case 
and you can press your buttons back through if they if they pushed at all. And the difference with this and the FT2D, one note, one thing you'd notice if you take apart the FT2D is the FT2D has a plastic um, kind of protectant on the front of the case. This does not. This you're actually touching the screen directly, and maybe that's why this screen has a little bit of a better touch feel. People say than the FT2D is because you're having to press the plastic on the front of that one through to the piece below where here they just expose the screen and they have a rubber gasket in here to seal uh, to seal the screen up to the front of this. So once we're in here we can take off this, uh, this little rubber gasket. The design of this and the FT2D are very similar, only this one shrunk down a bit, and it shrunk down because they raised the screen off the circuit board some, and they're able to put more stuff underneath where the screen is, one of the processors that's on the back of the other radio. They also took the GPS and put it on top here, where the GPS module is on the board on the FT2D. So those few things, I think, allowed them to shrink up the size of the radio. Now to take this top board off of here, there's a few screws that we'll, um, we'll take out real quick. And then what we'll see is a connector on the bottom between this little rotating knob and this board. There's just these three in the corner. They're pretty easy. On the FT2D, there was a few screws and they were, uh, they were nightmares. I talk about it in the video for that radio. They somehow galvanically sealed themselves or almost welded themselves down um, and it, it just basically destroyed it when I was trying to take it apart. On this radio, basically right underneath here, there's a connector that connects the top board to the bottom board, the main, uh, the main bus. So you kind of want to pull down at this bottom region and when you do, you'll pull it and disconnect it like that and then you can just tilt it over and what you have is the GPS and the switch connected both together through a ribbon cable to the board. The GPS antenna isn't just the antenna, there's actually the whole module underneath here and now this is just the data coming back um, to the board. If we just use a small flathead we can lift up this little flap that's back here which causes that to come right out. So now we have our two halves. Now I'll take off the screen just to show you um, what's underneath there. So there's four screws on the back here. Underneath this is one of the processors. It's a type of heat sink material. On the wiki you'll see I actually pulled it off and took pictures underneath it and you can see pictures of that. Um, it just peels off like a sticker and it, it looks like it's a, a heat spreader that's used um, with that processor that's underneath there. I still haven't in either one of these radios seen what's underneath here. I'm assuming it's the DSP because there's two processors plus a DSP but this thing is completely soldered down to the board and with both of these radios I haven't uh, I haven't had the desire to destroy either one of them yet um, to get underneath there and I'm not sure I could get underneath there without causing permanent damage so I haven't tried so this is what I'm talking about. On the wiki you'll see these detailed pictures, but this is one set of the, the processors and, and memory and things like that. And then under here is the other one, and then the DSP. This is the Bluetooth module um, that was added on this radio. And maybe that's one of the reasons they moved the GPS up to here is because they needed some room for the Bluetooth module that, that went on this board. But other than that, the processor and everything, I think it's almost the exact same as the FT2D. Um, so they just uh, tweaked some stuff to add the color screen on there. So let's set this one aside. I don't think there's anything else interesting about this, uh, this particular setup. Same thing if you want to take off the screen. You just lift up both these flaps. The screen comes off. You can see all those pictures on the uh, wiki that I'll link in the description. Uh, maybe one notable thing, this is the Bluetooth antenna that's soldered here on the board. The microphone's on the board in this radio and the FT2D, the microphone is actually in the case. So let's set this one aside. And we'll go to this. So this has a, a zillion screws um, to take out. So let's start, uh, let's start, we can 
talk a bit about it. So on this, they're just all uh, all the same kind of screws. There aren't any um, there aren't any standoffs like there are on the FT2D. There's just a whole lot of them. Now one, one thing to remember when you put this back together, you have to put this knob through here before you start putting all these screws in. Um, otherwise you can't, uh, it won't tilt out, it can't fit through. So you just have to make sure that that is, uh, is done when you're putting it back together. There is also on the back here um, the rubber that presses through for the, for the power uh, for the battery. And so this forms a little bit of a seal around here. And so taking it out is easy. Putting it back in requires a little bit of, uh, a little bit of work. But this is the transceiver side of the board. So everything, um, as we'll see on the back, everything related to transmit and receive is here. It communicates through this, um, this bus to here. I haven't monitored anything about this like I did on the THD74. So I'm not sure what's being sent uh, back and forth through there. But um, one interesting thing to note is that you can get the firmware off of this radio. Well, technically not off of this radio. You can capture the firmware while it's being loaded over USB. At least that's the way I've done it so far um, using some, some software. So I'll, you'll see in the on the wiki, I'll, I'll show how to do that. Um, it seems to work for, uh, for the FT2 and the FT3, um, both of them no problem and it just requires a little uh, kind of post-processing on the file itself when, uh, when you've captured it. So another cool thing about this is the antenna connector here actually screws down where on the uh, Kenwood it was a little pin that came through that I had to desolder which was uh, a lot tougher. So this radio, I just like the design of the Yesu much better as far as kind of serviceability and overall the fewer number of components that are in it. Um, I'll set this screw in a different spot since it's a little different. Um, and so when you go to take this out, it you know you can tell it's free now. All the screws are out, but this um, this rubber back here is what's holding it in. So I think the best way is to press right here to push it through, as opposed to trying to pull on the circuit board to get it through. Um, and so then you'll notice there is one component that has some heat sink paste on it that goes to the case right here. But all your other uh, components are there. Um, power connector on the side. And nothing too uh, notable about this board, I guess, um, other than it's your uh, transceiver board. And so then on the case here, this part will want to fall right out. The GPS is actually screwed down here. So we'll just take out these two screws and set them aside right here. So much, uh, much more detailed pictures of all this stuff is on the wiki. So if you really want to take a look at this, taking the, I'd really like to see what GPS module they used, but I didn't really want to desolder everything. And then it's double stick taped on here to pull it off. And so, you know, I just got the radio. I'd like to play with that a little bit before I kind of go, go full crazy on it. Um, so I left it, um, I left it alone. Um, also just to see the difference in performance between the FT2 and the FT3. Um, I imagine also this connector comes out of here, but I didn't see a lot of reason in doing it. Also because I didn't want to tweak the angle of this uh, part down here when I put it in. So I don't apply any kind of weird pressure to the board when I put it together. Um, and then other than that, there's some ceiling gaskets. All this stuff got um, completely taken off. You'll see the pictures on the wiki. Um, so check it out over there. Um, if you have any uh, comments or anything, put them down below and I'll, I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.